Hi everybody and welcome back to Mentor and yet another video podcast. Uh, I want to start this video podcast with uh, thanking all of you guys for uh, contributing with questions and all of you who have been sharing my um, pictures on Instagram is great, it's great help and I can and I can really see that there's more and more people coming into the, um, to the channel asking questions which means that I get more and more material to build these podcasts on so please keep doing that, it's great and I really appreciate uh, all of you contributing with questions. It's, this is why I'm doing this, so hopefully I'm helping someone. Um, today I am going to talk a little bit about myself, um, how, how it came by that I actually got into to, um, the aviation business and um, it's been something that I'm getting quite a lot of questions about. So uh, I'm going to start from the beginning. And I think that I'm actually going to divide this podcast up into multiple steps because it's it's quite a long story. But this, this podcast will be starting when I started to gain my aviation interests, um, which I think is the case for most of you guys that's watching this. So when I was a, a small boy, I actually wasn't thinking much about becoming a pilot. I had other interests. Um, I wanted to be an archaeologist uh, when I was around eight, nine years old. Possibly because Indiana Jones was kind of big back then, so that probably had something to do with it. But anyway, I hadn't got my eyes up for aviation yet. Uh, what happened was that my, uh, my father was working for a big uh, insurance company, uh, where I'm from, up in northern Sweden. And he had to cover quite a lot of distance to get to and from his different offices in northern Sweden. So he thought it would be a great idea to, to be able to fly there. So he actually started to take a, a private pilot license. And of course when he started that, then I was allowed to come with him to, um, to watch the aircrafts at the airfield and talk to the uh, flight instructors and things. And then it started to dawn on me that this is pretty cool. This this looks very nice. And I'm sure all of you who's watching this has had that, you know, can remember that feeling the first time of that kind of um, butterflies in the stomach when you saw the, the aircraft taking off and um, talking to the instructors and things like that. So this happened around when I was about 12, 13 years old. So I started to follow um, when my dad was flying to some of his assignments up in northern Sweden and every time that I got into the aircraft my interest for aviation grew more and more. But I can pinpoint a, spe spe a specific date when I realized that this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do when I grow up, when I go into the adult world. And that happened when my mom and dad had given me for my 13th birthday, they had given me a lesson in uh, Cessna 172 with my dad's um, pilot instructor. And I got to choose which day I wanted to go on this flight. Um, and one Sunday afternoon, it was one of those clear, crisp autumn days with almost no movement in the air whatsoever, completely you had visibility for miles and miles and just on that date the instructor was available. So me and my dad went out to the, um, to the airport up in a town called Örnsköldsvik in, uh, in the northern part of Sweden and I got into the Cessna 172 together with Mats, uh, which was the name of the flight instructor. And we started going through a checklist and uh, I got to to start the, um, the engine. And we taxied out, it was completely calm, there was no traffic around basically. And I got to follow through in the in the stick when when we took off. So we took off and we flew down towards the town of Örnsköldsvik. Um, flew over there on about 3,000 feet, had a good view over the city and then we flew inland towards the little village where I'm from. And there's quite a lot of mountains around there so it's a fantastic view. And it's all in a completely calm environment as in there was not a movement 
in the air, which meant that it was like I was like flying in a simulator almost. It, it's, it was just a tiny little movement of the aircraft as it was stuttering along. Uh, so we flew home, we flew over my house, over my friend's house, and all of this time I was at the controls. Um, Mats was only giving me directions, you know, add a little bit of rudder in turns, um, add thrust as you're climbing, take off a bit of thrust, and use the carburetor heat as you're descending and things. And it's uh, it's G airspace up there, so there's no it's no controlled airspace whatsoever. You can do whatever you want, you can climb, you can descend without notifying anyone, basically. So after having done this for about 45-50 minutes or so, we were heading back to the airport and Mats told me that, all right, so now we're gonna go in and land. And he basically talked me through the entire approach phase in onto finals and I was fully expecting him to take over at some point, but he didn't. He's we were talking about as an old flight instructor who has been doing this for thousands of hours. So he was just talking me through the entire approach down and he let me land the aircraft completely by myself. Now, when I got out of that air aircraft, I was sold. That was it. That was, the, that was the moment. I got out and I told my dad that this is what I want to do. Alright. So, what happened then? Well. When I had decided that this is what I wanted to do, of course the next logical step is to find out how. How can I make this dream come true? How can I become an actual pilot? So I started looking up different options. Um, and it turned out that, of course I was 13 years old, so I was very young. Uh, I could do some glider training um, that you can do at any age. You can also do um, these test lessons at any age as well, but of course you can't lift your license until you're 18 years old. So I realized that I have about, you know, four, at least four years now to find my way to become a pilot. And that's a good advantage. If you're young, it means that you have a lot of time to, to find which way you want to go. In my case, I found uh, a government-sponsored program, which existed in Sweden, it still actually does exist, uh, but in a slightly different form. Uh, this aviation program, this government-sponsored aviation program, uh, you can enroll in when you were 17 years old, so the second year in what we call gymnasium in Sweden, which is uh, upper secondary school. So, when I found that, I, I mean, obviously that was the answer to all my dreams, it meant that I could afford it. It meant uh, that I could do it early, which is all you want when you're young. You can't wait, you just want to get into it as quickly as you can. But, of course, um, the downside was that there was only 30 spots available in the entire country. And there were several hundred applicants every year for these 30 spots. But, in my view, that was more of a challenge than it was a, an obstacle. Um, I wasn't a fantastic student. When I was 13 years old, I had other things on my mind, I was doing other stuff. So my grades were, they were okay. Uh, they weren't great and they weren't poor, but they were somewhere in the middle. But and this is something I really want you guys to remember, those of you who are young, who are thinking about going into this. As soon as I had found a goal, as in a way forward, I knew that in order for me to have any chance whatsoever to get into this government-sponsored program, I had to have absolutely perfect records and grades. So as soon as I knew that, I also had a reason to really pay attention in school, to really focus on what, what, what I was doing, because I knew that any test I had, be it in you know drawing or in maths or physics or in something completely unrelated like gymnastics or whatever we had, I knew that every single grade counted towards my chances of getting into this school. So I started really working, as in this was the only goal I had. So this, I, you know, this is all I cared about. Well, not all I care about, obviously you're 13 years old, so there's other things you care about as well, but, but this was the main goal that I had. So I started lifting my grades from um, my, when I was 13, I was in seventh grade in Swedish school, until I got, up, got out of 
primary school, or that, well, lower secondary school it's called, I lifted my grades from an average of 3.5 on a 5 um, scale to 4.3 and that was during, let's see, that was during four semesters. So during four semesters I basically went from being an average student to a very good student. But I knew that in order to get into this program, my grade, the only grades that mattered was the grades that I had when I finished the first year of Swedish Gymnasium, which is the upper secondary school. So I knew that during that first year, when you are uh, 16 years old, those grades were all that counted. So I went to a natural science program. You had to go through a natural science program in order to, to um, gain access to this particular school. So I went there and I worked my ass off. And this is important for you to remember. Nothing will come for free, guys. Um, you will have to work hard in order to achieve your goals. No matter what that goal is, no matter if you want to become a plumber, if you want to become a pilot, if you want to become an astronaut, you will work, have to work really hard to achieve this. And I did that during that first year. So after that first year, the grades I had was excellent. There was no dent in my record. I had a full, um, well, it was a, a different scale than, but it would have had, it would have been the equivalent of a 5.0 average. Now, what that did was it pretty much guaranteed me a chance to go for the assessment for this school. You know, I knew that that was the only chance, the only way that I could guarantee to get an interview and an assessment was to get that 5.0 average. So I managed to go to um, that assessment and what happened during that assessment I'll tell you in the next podcast because this is getting too long. But bring with you from this podcast that if you want to achieve your goals guys, first of all the most important thing is to have a goal. You know, it's very, very hard to study in school when you're that young if you can't see a goal at the end of the horizon. So pick a goal. If that is to become a pilot, that's perfect. If that is to become an astronaut, if it become a fireman or whatever it is, pick a goal and find out what you need in order to achieve that goal and work hard to achieve it. That's the best tips that I can make and give you. Uh, it really worked for me. It's fantastic to to have a goal because that means that all of these different paths that you see all the time when you're in school, like why sh should I choose this subject? Should I choose another subject? Should I do this or that? Everything becomes simple when you have a goal. You know that okay, if you know if I want to achieve that over there, I have to take this road and then I have to take that road and I have to read this subject and I have to have this grade. So everything becomes simpler. And it's so much easier to motivate yourself if you do have a goal. So that's my advice to all of you guys. I guess that you guys who are watching this, you probably have your goal set already. Remember it and focus and work hard. So see you in my next podcast. It's once again, it's great to have you all here. Please keep asking questions and also tell your friends about this podcast if you think that it's in any, go in any way good. Thank you very much and see you next time.